First of all, I want to acknowledge uh, Her Excellency President Johnson Sirley for being here. Thank you. You know, I'm really excited to be here. Um, probably no one's more excited than my own parents. And, uh, and why wouldn't they be? Because we've been through a lot together. My parents moved to Liberia in the 70s. And when I was nine years old, a civil war erupted that demolished our country. People panicked, they fled, and many people died. My mother came knocking on the door one morning when the rebels surrounded our town. She said, Raj, pack your things, we have to go. We were rushed in the center of town, and there on a tarmac, we were separated into two lines. In one line stood my mother, sister, and I. We were stuffed into the cargo hatch of a plane. And across from us, in another line, stood hundreds of Liberian mothers, children strapped to their backs. As they tried to jump in the hatch with us, I watched soldiers restrain them. They were not allowed to flee. We were the lucky ones. We had a chance to rebuild our lives in North Carolina, and with the help of strangers, I was able to pursue my own American dream to become a doctor. But Liberia had set a torch in my heart, and the people of America had ignited it. I wanted to go back to see if I could do something to serve those I'd left behind. But what I found was destruction. Not only of buildings, but we had been left with just 51 doctors to serve a country the size of Ohio. And because of that, People in remote villages, because of all of those doctors working in cities, in remote villages, there was no care. In places like Konobo, my patients, my mothers, that are 34 weeks pregnant would have to walk impossible distances, sometimes up to two days to get health care. Two days. And because of that, they never brought their children in for care. They weren't able to. They didn't get vaccinated. They didn't get treated. And a quarter of those kids end up losing their lives before the age of five because of distance, the tyranny of distance. And this isn't just a story of Konobo or Liberia. You know that it's a story of rural Africans throughout the continent. 400 million people on the continent, half of the continent, live in so-called last-mile villages where they have no access to a doctor. We created Last Mile Health, or Tiatine Health, as we're known in Liberia, to solve that. We wanted to save lives in remote, hard-to-reach villages. And people told us it'd be impossible. They said in places with no infrastructure, it'd be impossible to build hospitals and provide a medical supply chain. They said you wouldn't be able to spend enough money on doctors to get them to go to remote villages. But we had made a commitment because the government of Liberia had asked us to, to go the last mile and go to Konobo. And we were going to figure out how to do this. So we had to rethink the entire way rural health care was done. Instead of thinking about bringing villagers to hospitals to get care, we had to bring care to them. And we had to do it not with doctors, but with villagers themselves, and teach them how to provide care for their own communities. But could a villager like Zakpa, who had never even finished seventh grade, could she really perform medical care like I could? She may never learn surgery, but she certainly could learn the basic medical skills that have the highest impact. And if she did, if she did, she could save lives in ways like never before. But the trick was, not a medical one, but a systems one. We had to find a way to help her perform as a, with high impact, not as an amateur, but as a professional. And so before we even hired her, we ran her through three tests. And then we ran her through 10 different modules for training on 10 of the top diseases. And then we didn't stop there. We equipped her with modern medical equipment, like this malaria test, put it in a backpack, along with treatment like this for pneumonia and other killers of children. And then we gave her a coach. We gave her a nurse to give her weekly supervision. And she went around providing care. She's mastered 50 medical skills. She treats newborns for infections. She attends emergency births. And she actually is providing care with frontline health workers and saving lives. They can do up to 80% of treatment for the top killers in their community. And I just got back from seeing these folks, and it's amazing. The transformative impact they've had. They've doubled the rate of survival for women with HIV. They've doubled access to malaria and pneumonia treatment for kids. And they're doing all of this in places that have never had treatment before. And unlike doctors, they're going to stick around for the long haul and make a permanent impact. We've done this in partnership with the Liberian government and many other partners. What if we could, for 34,000 people, what if we could take this to everyone? To get it to everyone in Liberia, to one and a half million rural people, it would take $6.50 per person per year. We think we can get there in a really short time frame. 
But to do that, there's a catch. We can't do it alone. We need people like you who have the expertise in growing businesses, in building systems, in planning workforces. And if that vision is aligned with yours, I hope you'll join us today at the breakout session and provide some mentorship to us. You know, ultimately, this work isn't about going the last mile to some far off place and providing care. It's about something much more personal. I think about illness a lot. It's my job. If I were to ask each one of you to think about someone in your life that had fallen sick, I'm sure you'd think about their pain, but you might also think about their courage. Illness is universal. Access to care is not. But today, we can start changing that right here in this room by bringing care to everyone, no matter where they live, if we have the courage to go the last mile. Thank you.